Hi everyone. So today I wanted to try to do a few things. Um, one of you asked me a really, really great question recently and I wanted to kind of address that because it's come up for me with in-person clients as well as um, some wonderful viewers kind of asking this similar type of question and I think it's important to look at. So I want to talk about that, but I'd like to do that at the end of the video because first of all, um, I wanted to share two new decks that I just got last night. Um, and they're new like for state side. I know some people elsewhere in other countries got the decks earlier. Um, and Avalon, um, Avalon did a wonderful kind of reveal of both of these decks, which I'll post links to those videos below, um, that had me really, really excited to work with them. And so, um, I, I just want to share with you guys these decks because I'm really, really excited about them. And then I have another kind of surprise deck that I wanted to talk about too. So, um, first of all, let me start talking about the, uh, I'm going to save the best oracle of the two oracle decks um, for the, the next reveal. I shouldn't say best, but the one that I've been the most excited about, I guess. Let's say that. So this is the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed um, Now, you all know that I do, I'm very blessed to be able to sell decks at Made on Earth, the boutique that I work at, but um, because we work with a small independent distributor, they don't get decks first. Um, Amazon gets decks before they do to offer for sale because they buy more decks. It's, you know, it's unfortunately it's the way it works right now. Um, so these decks aren't available yet through our distributor, but they should be soon. But this is one of those rare occasions where I just really couldn't wait for these two decks. And so I did decide to purchase them on Amazon. So, you know, um, that's something that happens for all of us. I think we all try to purchase small as much as we can, but then of course there are times like this when this happens. So I did get these on Amazon. However, I'm hoping within the next week or so we will have them for sale at Made on Earth. So if you are feeling that you can wait to purchase them, um, and you're looking to support small businesses, we are definitely an option and we're more than happy to take a phone order or an email order, you know, whatever's easier for you. So, um, I talked about Colette Baron reeds decks recently and, um, when I first started working with, this is going to be a long video guys, <laughs> Vincent cooperates with his nap. Um, when I first started working with Oracle decks. Uh, Colette Baron Reed's decks were some of my favorite ones to work with. The Map and the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle decks by Colette Baron Reed I really, really loved. And I used those decks a lot the first few years that I was reading for myself and for clients. I used those two Oracle decks a lot. They were a wonderful introduction to Oracle decks. They're all beautifully made. And yet at a certain point in time, I kind of felt like I had outgrown um, that style of Oracle deck. You know, for whatever reason, we just kind of all know when we've moved on to a different type of Oracle deck and it's something new speaking to us. So when I heard that this deck was coming out, I actually wasn't that um, intrigued at first. And then I started working with the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle again and, and kind of approaching it in a new light, in a new way, uh, not needing to use the guidebook so much and just feeling really um, drawn to the symbolism in that deck and also working with the mythology of Avalon as well. And so I really, I was, I've really been working with that deck quite a bit lately and enjoying it. So I was thinking to myself, well, Colette has this new deck coming out. Maybe I will give it a try. And then I watched Avalon's um, video revealing the deck. And I thought, okay, the artwork looks really pretty. And I, so I think I'll give it a try. And I'm actually really, really glad I did. So let me show you... And this is not a review, guys. This is a reveal. This is more like Oracle Deck chat. <laughs> um, the box is nice and big and very sturdy if you do like to store your decks in their boxes. Um, and the cover is very beautiful. There's an owl on it, so of course I am drawn to it. The And it has the gilt edging, which I always love. The really cool thing, I don't know if you can see this on my little iPhone camera, but there's this beautiful shimmery glitter gorgeousness going on on the back of the deck as well as kind of 
throughout the cards as well. Not necessarily in the image, but just on the cardstock. And I really like it. It's actually really, really pretty. So um, you can't, I don't think you can really, oh God, I already get something on it. Um, I don't think you can really see it on here, but there's this really pretty glitter. It's not, like it doesn't take away at all um, from the images. But it's there and it's very pretty. And I did get something on this card already. Oh well, it's okay. So the idea behind this deck is that the Oracle is a being herself who's kind of channeled the messages for Colette, uh, through Colette. And she has very specific meanings for the cards. And Colette does encourage you to use reversals in the deck as well. I did give the guidebook a, a little quick read last night. So that's really interesting. And you can see her face in every single image in the card. She, her face will be there somewhere. Like you can see it pretty clearly there. Oh, and there's her face right there. So I think um, this is the type of deck that once you get comfortable with it, you don't have to use the guidebook unless you want to. The The titles are very, like they, they pull a feeling from you immediately. And the images as well also have some have symbolism that you wouldn't think there's a lot in here, but there actually is from, that, from the artwork. The artist is like certainly at the top of her game right now. Like you can tell in the other decks, which are still absolutely beautiful and stunning. Um, I'm in no way saying that they're not. Um, but you can see in each deck how she's really, really learned and bringing new things in and changing it up, but it still has a Colette feel to it. So props to the artist for her amazing work. And um, Jenna Della Grataglia, I hope I'm saying that right, she is the artist. And I think she's done all, if not almost all, of Colette's decks. So, oh, I love this one. So this is a really, a really beautiful deck, guys. Um, I think it's one that I'm actually really going to enjoy using and getting to know. Now, I know she really, it seems like in the guidebook, she's really encouraging you to use the guidebook with the deck. But like I said, I think as you work with the deck more and more, you won't necessarily need to. And it can really be a very, very intuitive deck for you. So it's a beautiful deck. Again, the cardstock is pretty good. Um, the gilt edging is beautiful. This is the backing. And you can see the Oracle's face there. It's really beautiful. Um, and when I opened, was looking through these decks last night, my husband was actually drawn to this one the most out of all of them, which was very interesting to me. So I just want to show you that one. I like that one. So I found that to be really fascinating. Um, so this is a deck that I've been like pleasantly surprised with and I'm really looking forward to getting to know better and to working with. It's also because it's a Hay House deck that's very reasonably priced. Um, and again, if you are just starting working with Oracle decks, Colette's decks are great for that. So the guidebook is nice and fat, not something you typically see from Hay House. And then she has tiny, um, oh my god, words are gone. I'm having a hard time with the words today. A tiny, um, reproduction of the image, the title, the essential meaning, then the oracle's message for you, the relationship message, the prosperity message and the protection message, which you read the protection message when the card is showing up reversed. So again, if you're just starting with the cards or if you have a hard time reading for yourself, then this is a guidebook that's going to be very helpful for you in a deck that you might really, really enjoy using. And she does encourage using reversals with the deck. So I'm really, really looking forward to working with this deck. I'm glad that I purchased it. I'm not at all disappointed in the artwork or the style of the deck, and it definitely seems like Colette brought a lot of intention and attention to the deck as well. So, are you guys ready? Oh my god, I can't believe that I'm actually holding this deck and working with this deck. I, um, I've been waiting for this deck for a while, and... Mm -hmm. And, um, and really, really wanting this deck. And so I'm so, 
I'm so happy that it's here. Oh my god. It's the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle by Alana Fairchild. Okay, so you all know that I don't usually keep my boxes, but first of all, just before we even get into this, this is a box that I will be keeping. Look at this. Look at the side. And each side... Sorry, these two sides are the same. But this side and this side, different images. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. So this is the back. And, okay, before I, like, freak out over the card images, I just will share with you. So, as Avalon pointed out in her little reveal, this is a thicker box than you usually see with Blue Angel, especially Alana Fairchild's decks, which is really nice. And you can tell that it's fatter because the guidebook is even bigger than normal, and her guidebooks are always amazingly juicy and delicious. So, oh yeah, I am as smitten with this deck as I knew I would be when I heard the title. So I'm just going to read you this part too, which I think Avalon might have read in her reveal. But there is something um, so unique and special about Alana Fairchild's decks, which is why... Um, which is why they are my favorite oracle decks out of any oracle decks that I've ever worked with. She brings this um, intention and channeling through of the goddess that feels very authentic to what I experience when I work with different goddesses. And um, she also is championing an authentic life and a life where you are caring for not just the tribe, but yourself as well, and honoring your dreams and goals, and believing in yourself, and believing that the more that you heal, the more the universe heals with you. And this very much lines up with my own spiritual beliefs, and, and lines up with the work that I'm here to do in this incarnation. So, um, her decks just have felt the most authentic and powerful, and they're beautiful representations of just how deep card work can take you and that it doesn't have to just be that kind of surface thing that a lot of us think about that like, oh, you consult the deck because you have a question about a guy or a girl or you want to know about work or whatever. Not that those things are mundane, but her decks really allow you to get very deep underneath the surface of that and look at core, core pieces and core wounds and core beauty. So... And especially um, through her Kuan Yin and Isis Oracle, deck, uh, Oracle decks, um, there was a very much, her channeling of those two energies has truly been my experience working with them. And so when um, working with the first Kuan Yin deck, I loved the energy that she brought and that feeling of just unconditional compassion that Kuan Yin brings. But I could also feel um, that there was more to come because I, from my experience with Kuan Yin, um, there is a sensualness and a beauty and a fearlessness that she brings as well when you work with her. You know, a lot of times we like to um, kind of castrate her just like we do with Mother Mary and make her just unconditional love and mother and we don't allow her to be anything else societally. But with the Wild Kuan Yin deck, we're getting to explore kind of a naughty side of Kuan Yin as well and embracing that in ourselves, which is what I am so, so excited about. So, let me just read this to you. Within you beats a wild and compassionate heart, alive with fierce optimism. Your heart knows that love has the power to conquer fear. You have the courage to walk a path of transformation. You are not afraid to shed old skins to become more of your divine self. You dream of living your highest destiny with fearlessness and joy. You are one of the wild ones. You will not be tamed by convention. You will not be censored by the fears of others. You are not afraid to be different. You are not afraid to be open to life, to take risks for what you love, and most of all, to keep hope in your heart. This deck is for you. This oracle deck has been created with the specific intention to be your light in those moments when the darkness seems too much. When hope doesn't seem strong enough to overcome doubt, this oracle deck will become your medicine and remind you that grace makes all things possible. 
when the love and peace of spirit seems too far from the troubles of the physical world, this oracle deck will become the body of the Divine Mother for you to hold either in your hands, close to your heart, or rest gently on your forehead. She will bring you comfort. She'll remind you of your fire, your boldness, your unique beauty, your passion, your courage. She'll guide you through even the darkest loss into the blessing of new life. The energy of this oracle deck will permeate all depths of your being. It will open your heart and mind to untold possibilities where what was once believed an impossible dream becomes your living, radiant reality. So, um, yeah. There's nothing else to say. That is just beauty. And I, the feel of this deck, like it's just a vibrational hum you can feel coming off the deck, like that's the intention and that that's the experience you can have with the deck. So she does talk about why she chose these images of a young girl and the, and the yak. So I just want to share that with you. Um... She says, I kept having the idea of a naughty Kuan Yin, that irrepressible, rebellious, divinely defiant spirit that is alive in all the holy ones from many spiritual traditions around the world. I knew Kuan Yin had broken many rules in her lifetime on earth and was all the more spiritually empowered for it. I wanted to bring that divine defiance, that untamed heart, into the deck to help us humans on our journey from conditioning to wild divinity. So I settled upon wild Kuan Yin as the theme for the deck. Um, let's see. And then she talks about the yak and this idea of um, something that's so heavy being weightless in the artist's images and the, and the beauty and the wildness of that and that we can have that experience ourselves and find that ourselves even in these areas where we feel very stuck. So the artist, um, I will not attempt to pronounce his name because I have a feeling I'm going to pronounce it wrong. But this is the artist of the deck, and this is his name right here. And these, this is the type of artwork that I dream about having in a deck of my own someday when I do create a deck. This is just stunning artwork, and that is not to say anything less of any other artwork that I've seen in a deck. Um, but when you see artwork like this, it's just something really, really... Um, Stunning. It's just a, a just a beautiful, talented artist creating artwork that marries so well to the meanings of the cards themselves. So the first thing is no borders, which I am in love with. Um, here, and then this is the backing. So you can see there's the title above you, the Lantern Dancer, and then the image itself. <coughs> this may bother some people, but it doesn't bother me. Some of the cards you'll have to turn sideways. So they are numbered and they're also titled. So when you go to look up your guidebook meanings, you'll work with the numbers. Love that daughters of the red tent. Look at that. Let your world spin on its axis. Oh, I love this image, the snow shepherdess. I mean, just like, I know that my camera does not do this deck justice, but just look at that. Yeah, so the card size is pretty, it looks like it's closer to me to the, the original Kuan Yin Oracle than like, say, Journey of Love or Sacred Rebels, which has been just a little smidge smaller. And again, no borders. Oh. So beautiful. Just look at the light, the way the artist used the light. And you get this feeling of freedom and, and um, fearlessness. 
but she's also reaching a hand out to you, encouraging you to join her in that in your own way. Um, and that's what I am really, really drawn to about this deck. Oh, I love this one too. Grandmother ensures safe crossing. Sacred Falcon shows the way. So, um, and this is the cover image, The Little One Rises. Holy Sisters. Oh my god, I just have to show you a few more. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know this, this video is going to be so long. So the, the deck images are stunning, even more beautiful than the box cover in person, which the box cover itself is unique and beautiful. And so it, it far surpasses any, any expectations that I had. So you can see in typical Fairchild fashion, we have card reproduction, image reproduction, the title. This is your kind of synopsis. Then we get into the heart of the matter here for a few pages. And then there is a healing process. So if you have not tried the healing processes in her guidebooks, I highly recommend them. I use them all the time when I'm doing work for, on myself for myself. And I find that they're very, very healing and they don't take a lot of time to do. And so you don't get into that like, oh, I'm gonna beat the clock with this type of thing when you're in your own busyness and, and feeling stressed. Um, you don't need to worry about that with the with the healing processes. They're simple, they're fast, or as fast as you need them to be, um, but they're very effective and they don't take a lot of, not all of them anyhow, they don't take a lot of uh, stress or, or digging in an uncomfortable way. So let's say you only had 10 minutes at lunch and you chose to do the healing process, you wouldn't necessarily be a mess on the floor at the end of the healing process and not able to go back into your work self. So I highly recommend that um, working with the healing processes. This deck, she does definitely offer some great layouts. And you can absolutely use it in um, spreads and for divination. But it's, it's really intended to help you to deeply heal and shift. And so I encourage with all of her decks... Um, that you really spend a lot of time with the deck and do a lot of that internal work with the deck that the deck's encouraging you to do, I, pro I promise you it's going to be worth it. And these will be decks that you will have with you for the rest of your life and work with constantly. I mean, I work with the Kuan Yin and the Isis Oracle as much as I did when I first bought those decks years ago now. And they've truly assisted me in changing my life and, um, and opening up to receiving and, and finding vulnerability as strength and feeling empowered. And the same goes for Journey of Love Oracle, Mother Mary Oracle, and who am I forgetting? Sacred Rebels Oracle, which is an amazing deck as well. So here she is, the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. Be looking for daily draws with her on my Facebook page. And I also am going to be doing another deck challenge um, like I do a couple times a year. And this is going to be more of the style I typically do, which is using one deck, just one deck for a week and picking four or five decks and doing that for a whole month. And this will be one of the decks included in that. And I will be doing videos with this deck as well. And you guys know I'll have a, few, a full review as well of both of these decks for you in time. So the other deck I thought I would show you all, um, a wonderful, wonderful viewer sent me this deck as a gift and um, she hadn't, I, I don't think had any idea that I've been really wanting this deck, but she sent it to me. She said she felt called to do so. And um, I am so honored that I get to work with this deck now and that it was gifted to me in such a beautiful way. I've been wanting this deck for a long time, since before the deck even came out for sale. Um, but for some reason, I've just never purchased it for myself. They're, like the Wild Kuan Yin's been on my list forever, and I end up purchasing, you know, kind of those decks that were on the list before it ahead of time, and and not um, 
and for some reason just not purchasing this deck for myself but I really really truly have wanted this deck for so long and it's the Tarot of Delphi so it's created and curated by J.D. Hildegard Hinkle, and it features um, artwork from some of my favorite artists. So you can see there's an entire, a lit there's literally an entire list here of all the artists. So, so many, John William Waterhouse, Lawrence Alma Tatema, John William Godward, Arthur Hacker, the list goes on and on. Rossetti's in here. Um, just artists. Hughes is in here too. Artists that I absolutely love. And so they've curated this collection from these artists who have passed. And it has pre-Raphaelite, pre which is my favorite. There's symbolist art, um, artwork in here. Aesthetic, academic, and neoclassical art from the Victorian and Edwardian eras. And includes 78 tarot cards an alternate empress card, a title card, and an instruction book. So this is the backing, which I really like. Isn't that beautiful? And then this is the little card with the info. And this is the instruction booklet. So it for each card, there's a little meaning and it tells you the title of the painting and the artist and um, let's see I have not read this little guidebook yet because I was reading the Wild Kwanian last night but there's a little introduction and um, there is the Celtic cross a three card spread that kind of basic thing showing up as well so let me show you some of these so this is a self-published deck to my knowledge and my understanding um, yeah, I'm just going to show you these because I just this image I had on my wall in my early 20s. Oh my god, love this one! I'm so glad she's the high priestess. So, this deck, I am so, I am so, thank you so much to the viewer that sent this to me. I am so excited to work with this deck. Um, I'm so honored and blessed that it was gifted to me and that it came to me at the right time, you know, just when I needed it. Um, and I'm so excited to do a review for you all. So here's the Hierophant. Oh, that's a good one for strength. So the cardstock... <coughs> Excuse me, the cardstock is actually pretty good for an independently published deck. Oh, I love this one. So, Threads of Fate would be the Wheel of Fortune. I love that Seer says Justice. If you love this type of artwork, um, this deck is, is probably going to just absolutely move you, but... I am so excited that I have this deck, and so thank you so much to the viewer who sent it to me. Um, I am deeply, oh, the devil becomes the siren. Look at this, tower becomes a shipwreck. I did look at this last night, but I, I was like so into, it was like multiple deck amazingness after I got home from work. I was more focused on which images they chose to use. And then the world becomes the garden. Oh, look, the ace of coins, and they have a little owl on the coins. Oh my gosh. Oh, I should have said there is nudity. Sorry, guys, I did forget to say that. Um, but it's artistic nudity. So um, hopefully that hasn't bothered anyone. But this deck is beautiful. I am, oh my God, I'm so, I'm just so thankful and I'm so excited to work with it. So just know that there'll be lots of goodies and things coming from, um, from working with this deck. And again, thank you so much to the viewer who gifted it to me. So the other thing I wanted to talk about today is I have so many things that I have so many things I want to do videos on, um, but I, I wanted to address this question 
before too much time goes by because like I said at the beginning, um, it's I think it's really important. A lot of people have been asking about this. And so it seems to me like it's really um, a time to to address the question. And my best answer to this question is going to come from experience and what I know to be true for me. So if it doesn't feel right for you, this isn't something that you have to take on. But I do want to share because it has been asked um, what my experience with this is. So recently I did a video on the Mother Mary Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And someone had asked me, because I talked about meditating and meeting a goddess or archetype you're wanting to call in and having a conversation with them, and how powerful that's been for me, especially in healing wounds and aspect to certain archetypes. So one of you had asked me, well, how do I know when I go to do this that I'm actually talking to the being and not myself? And I think this is a really, really important question. And it's one that I definitely struggled with at the beginning as far as like, what's my imagination and what isn't? And this is what I have found to be so over years of doing this and now stepping into uh, channeling and medium work as well. Um, your imagination is your connection to the divine and it is your kind of microphone for the divine within you as well because you are divine yourself so you were created in god's image however you want to line up with that and so therefore you are you carry god within you you are god at, at the source so that can be a lot for some of you to sit with and that can feel really uncomfortable so if you had that kind of reaction when i just said that sit with it um don't reject it immediately Sit with what it would feel like to understand that you aren't just a spark of the divine, but you are the divine in a physical manifestation. And we all know that physical reality is really just an illusion anyhow. So this is all a beautiful dream that you are involved in. And your imagination becomes a very powerful key for you. And so when I am talking about meditating with these archetypes, I am talking about using my imagination when it's me and your imagination when it's you. And that is why I've found meditations that aren't just guided, but that or I actually allow it to go wherever it wants to go using my imagination to be the most powerful and profound experience and connection with the divine, especially as explored through female archetypes, which would be our goddesses. So what I would say to you is let go of needing it to be absolutely sure that it's that goddess you're talking to. So let's say Mother Mary. Let's let go of needing to make sure that we know it's Mar Mother Mary and just trust that she's coming forward and that she is going to come forward. Her voice, when it speaks to you, is going to come forward because you are Mother Mary. And so you are accessing infinite truth you are accessing the infinite knowledge and wisdom of Mother Mary when you set a clear intention to do so. And you will know how it feels when you are in touch with, you could call that your higher self. I call it the goddesses. Um, and again, with that understanding that I am a part of them, they are a part of me. Um, you will know when it is the voice of what some people would call the ego or the controller voice because it won't feel good. And if it doesn't feel good, then all you need to do is end that conversation. You don't need to get into a fair space with it. You just know that it's not the time for you to do it right now and that that voice is coming through and encouraging you to step back into a safe but perhaps unhealthy pattern for you. So again, you'll know because it's not going to feel good. It's going to feel icky and yucky and it's going to and the words that are coming through the understandings that are coming through are going to feel negative or dark or painful the encouragement isn't going to be an encouragement that causes an expansion for you vibrationally but it's actually going to cause a decrease in the expansion or, or a pulling in of the energy instead of an expansion of the energy out so that is how you know when it's not the voice of the higher self or the goddess coming through. 
it's not going to feel good. And so you just end the conversation at that point. Other than that, if the information that's coming through feels authentic and real for you and that it's an important message for you to receive at that time, that is the goddess talking to you. And if you have a preconceived notion of what she's going to sound like or look like before you step into meditation with her, she will often take you by surprise. And this can be any goddess. And as I said in that video about the Mother Mary Oracle, um, Kuan Yin took me by surprise because I wasn't expecting her to show up when she did. And she didn't feel like Mother Mary or this type of kind of judgment space I was in about a softer goddess when I felt like I needed all that fiery energy coming through in the sacred feminine for me. But what I actually needed was Kuan Yin and understanding and forgiveness and compassion. And she chose to come through in meditation. And I have uh, had very powerful conversations and relationships with her since. So it's about letting go of the judgment of, is this real? Is it true? How do I know for sure that I'm actually communicating with this goddess or archetype or energy or God or divine being in my meditation? How do I know it's not that and just me? And my answer to you is you are that. And so it's about trusting that and opening up to that. And that is going to be extremely powerful for you. Once you start to shift that, then you will find that once you start releasing those judgments of the way something has to look and what the divine is and how it can communicate with you um, and finding the empowerment within yourself of stepping into your power of holding the divine within your being, understanding that you are divine, um, that sh starts to shift everything and you will find that your psychic abilities, um, your ability to communicate with these things that you've been looking at as so separate from yourself, then starts to explode and grow and grow powerfully, as, especially as time goes by and you start to work with this more. So the best advice that I can give you as far as how do you know when it's, when it's them coming through is to use your imagination. It's your greatest gift and tool and understand that these beings are not separate from you. You are linked with them. They are a part of you. You are a part of them. And all of this is a very beautiful, powerful dream. And it's about the contrast in this life. So opening up to the communication being whatever it's going to be and feel and take you wherever it's going to is very, very important and powerful in my opinion. So that's the best advice I can give you is use your imagination, honor it, trust it, don't shut it down, don't doubt it. And again, you will know when it doesn't feel right that it's not something that you should be connecting with in that way at this time. It will feel wrong, it will feel yucky, it will feel icky. And so it, that's your biggest sign from your body that, okay, hey, this isn't the vibration I need to be at right now. Let's shift it. And then it's very simple to just step out of that and release that mm, experience of connection with that energy. So let me know what questions come up for you guys from this. And for the person who asked me this, does this answer your question? I hope it does. I hope it gives you some clarity and some guidance and at least something to think about, even if you don't agree with what I'm saying um, and you don't feel that, that that's your truth. Um, explore it and see where it takes you. But let me know what other questions come up for you guys because this is an area that is really important to me. Um, this is how I started opening up to my own abilities as a healer. And so it's a huge part of the journey is honoring the imagination and using it to the full as the gift and the tool that it is. It's why you chose to incarnate with it. You have the power, baby. <laughs> So thank you all for joining me in this insanely long video. Um, I am so excited about the new decks that have, I've come in, I've come into my life over the last two days, and I'm excited to work with them, to um, share them with you all, and also I will definitely be doing reviews on all three decks as I get to know them better. And I'll also be featuring them in my uh, monthly tarot challenge for myself and sharing that journey with all of you. So I am sending you all so much love. Many blessings. I hope your October is treating you well and, and allowing you to feel the connection to the earth as sacred. So many blessings, guys. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye.